Boom. So good evening, everybody. Or you know what, if you're watching on the replay or you're listening on the replay or whatever at some point in the future, good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is for you. Thank you so much for being here. If you are here live, it is three minutes past nine on Monday, the 6th of September, 2021. Um, yeah, my birthday on the 9th. Don't forget, folks, uh, you want to uh, send me cash, just deposit it straight into uh, the Act on This Bank account and um, I'll, I'll get it from there. Thanks very much. Um How's everybody doing? Is everybody all right? I've just been looking in the chat. Looks like lots of people have got some cool things going on. Sandra's going to a concert tomorrow night. Um, amazing. You're gonna miss the you're gonna miss the 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 member only mastermind, Sandra. But you can you can catch up on it on the uh, on the replay. Tony Ross is here all the way from the state. It's always good to see you in the chat there, Tony. Um, so we've got loads to discuss tonight. I don't really know where to start. We've got absolutely loads on my little agenda here of what to talk about. I think what I'll probably do. Let's do a recap on last week's uh, Acts on This Member Only Zoom session with um, the incredible team from Alex Priestley Talent, um, an incredible acting agency. If you are currently seeking representation, you are looking for an agent, or you know what, maybe, let's just be honest, in your heart of hearts, you're like, I'm thinking of changing agents. Um, go over to actsonthis.tv and check out this feature that we did last week. If I just click on the uh, preview features section here, you can watch a little trailer. I'll play this out in a bit for you guys. You can watch a trailer um, of this session. Um, it's called Seeking Representation the Right Way with Alex Priestley and Georgia Padfield from Alex Priestley Talent. Um, what a freaking honest chat this was. Probably, it's got to be up there. I'd say maybe one, I'd say probably the most honest chat on agents I've ever had on AtsOnThis.tv. If you are a member, click into your members area, click into your premium membership and you'll find it right at the top there. It says our latest five features. For those on the audio experience, I'm putting it on my screen right now. Sorry about that. You won't be able to see it, uh, but go to actsonthis.tv. You will find it there um, in the preview features section and in the members area if you are a member. It was about two hours and 15 minutes long. Let's have a look. What was it? Let's have a look. Oh no, that was the other one. No, it was two hours. Yeah, an hour and 51 minutes actually. So yeah, two hour, nearly two hours long. I was thinking of the uh, of David Crowley's the week before. That was like getting on for two, two and a half hours. Um, but I'm going to play some some clips out from this tonight, Some just some salient parts. I'm going to play like six minutes out. Um, if you want to watch the rest, the other hour and 45 minutes, get a membership, actsonthis.tv. It will change your acting career for the better. It does for people every single week. But this was a particularly interesting chat for me and just absolutely zero bullshit, just cut through all of the nonsense. And we looked at exactly how you approach, particularly Alex and Georgia at Alex Priestley Talent, but just agents in general, the right way, getting your email game right, impressing them with a showreel. If you don't have your showreel in a professional format in terms of you don't have like, you know, broadcast stuff that you've done on TV, how you can still make a massive impact with self-tapes and stuff you have shot yourself, um, working with an agent, what to do when you you feel you are doing everything, but you're just not getting auditions, um, little hacks around getting submissions lists from agents, when you should leave an agent, how you can do that gracefully um, so it isn't like messy and it feels like you're getting a divorce because uh, it's just business. That just happens. Sometimes you just got to leave. You know, sometimes you're like, this has run its course like anything else. Um, and, you know, and, and you and you move on and it's good for you and it's good for the agent as well. Um, so uh, we cover all of that and absolutely loads more. Probably going to start with a clip on emailing agents. I know we cover this on every single act on this feature with an agent. Um, everybody's taste is a little bit different. Certain agents like certain things. Overall, I still don't think you can get it wrong. How many people here are currently looking for rep? Let me know in the chat if you're here live and you're still scared of reaching out to agents or maybe you you, you know you know you should be reaching out, you should be emailing, but I want to know the reason why you're not doing it basically. Um, I think a lot of it is people feeling they're, they're somehow going to get the email wrong. And it just doesn't, I just don't see how you can do that unless, you know, unless you're really not thinking about what you're writing, you're not making it personal, you're not selling yourself properly. Um, you're certainly not going to get it wrong by just, you know, uh, I don't know, by putting the standard stuff in. You'd have to really, like, be rude in an email or offend somebody in order to get it wrong. Um, I don't think, you know, you're ever going to get kind of blacklisted by just reaching out and asking for representation as long as you do it in a, uh, you know, in a polite business 
business-like way. With personality, though, I mean business-like in terms of no, showing them that you know and understand the industry. I don't mean being like dear sir, madam, and all you know, all that sort of uh, that sort of stuff. You've got to show personality. A lot of this industry is about who wants to work with who and who would be great to work with, and people being nice and friendly and kind and basically just decent people to uh, to be around. Um, I'm just going to see in the uh, in the chat if we've got people who are afraid of reaching out or if so anyone's been vulnerable enough to go yeah i i know i should be doing that and i uh, and i'm just not for whatever reason um let's have a look oh is someone saying something about the audio what's the what's the audio like is it all right for for everybody alex is saying it's a bit choppy for him i'm looking at the uh at my end alex it looks good i've got a green i've got a nice solid green light which means the connection should be fine so uh, let me know if anyone else is uh, is struggling, but it looks like everybody else is saying it's uh, it's all right. So he says, looking for rep, and I'm scared as I've been turned down from ten. There's a lot. There's plenty more fish in the sea, Zoe. Um, and, th- and you know what? And at that point, we go right. You know, we can explore different things and go right. What what is potentially going wrong here? Is there will be no point. What I wouldn't suggest you do is continue to send the same email and the same stuff you're sent. That you've sent to those ten. Don't send that to another 10. We'd, let's have a, we'd have to have a look and go, right, what are you actually sending out? How are you writing that email? You know, How are you selling yourself within it? Who are you writing to? Are those agents in alignment with where you're at in your career? Uh, what material are you sending them? You know, Obviously, they need to see you act. It doesn't have to be super professional stuff, but it's got to show your ability. Um, do you really understand your casting type? So you're playing to strengths and you're not playing stuff that's unbelievable or stuff you wouldn't be cast as right now um, in your career. Um, you've got to dissect it, but it can become quite good fun. It's almost like a game and go, right, now I'm going to send three more emails and let's see if I get, you know, even just a a bite from any of those three. And if you do, then we go, right, now we can send this out to a few more. Um, Unless you just get signed off the back of that and happy days, isn't it? Um, But I'm going to play a clip out now um, for uh, everybody from, yeah, looking at emails and emailing, particularly, you know, anyone who's reaching out to, to Alex and Georgia. Georgia is... Alex is assistant agent. Alex is the founder um, and the head agent of Alex Priestley Talent. Uh, before Alex set up Alex Priestley Talent, she was uh, the head of the acting department at PHA, another agency in Manchester. She was there for a decade. She decided to set up on her own in the summer of 2018. Um, and her clients now, she's got some wicked clients working on massive stuff, uh, regulars in serial drama, um, members of Acts on This.TV who have signed with her, who have gone on to play regulars. Um, I always give David Carpenter a shout out because he smashed it at just 17 years old. He's now in the Bay, um, season three as a regular. Um, but he signed with Alex off the back of Alex coming on, actually, another feature on Acts on This.TV when she first uh, set up as, a, as an agent. But here's a little bit that, you know, on, on, uh, on emailing that Alex and Georgia had to say. I'll be back in a sec. We'll start off with ultimately getting the email right. So in terms of like the 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 things that you like when the actors do in emails when they get it right. We want to know about you. And it's like you said, Ross, which again we'll probably touch on again, but it so is about personality nowadays. You know, gone are the days where it's kind of like, who can you be? Who, you know, who can it's it is about ultimately what you're like as a person, what you like to do. I always want to know about you and what you've done and what your history is and what your background is, how you came into that thing. But I think with regards to the email, you know, it's keep it fairly straight to the point, you know, um, but also give us an overview. So like you said, please don't go through all of the points of every aspect of your, your career so far because the CV speaks for itself. Um, but, you know, I think a few bullet points of, of points as to what, what would appeal to us would be great. So, for instance, have you just been in something that we might have watched or we might have gone to the theatre to see? Um, you know, have you wor- worked with someone that we rep or that yep. we've connected with or that we would recognise, a writer, a director, a producer? I think it's just about kind of straight to the point, but show a bit of your personality you know don't it doesn't have to be so formal that's what drives me mad as well you know um and serious and intense and uh, you know i want i want to get a a feel for you even before i've even looked at anything else of yours like your cv or your showreel or anything like that the main points are do your research make sure you know who you're emailing and make it personal um and know you you know your usps yeah. like know what what it is about you that we need have you looked at our client list 
is there someone who looks just like you because we're probably we don't have room for you you know that we're a boutique agency we're only gonna have a set amount of clients so that we can give everyone the attention that they need so if there is someone that looks just like you obviously feel free to still send the email but maybe say you know i know i'm very similar to so and so but i actually have this which i know that that person doesn't yes As it said there, if you want to unlock the full two-hour session with Alex and Georgia, act on this.tv, get your membership, and that will be literally unlocked for you instantly. One thing that I want to recap on that Georgia said there that I think is really, really important because I see a lot of actors talk themselves out of emailing an agency because they've done the right thing. They've gone on the website, they've done their research, they've looked for other actors who are in their casting bracket, who might look like them, who might you know be from the same place as them or whatever. Um, and they've gone, ah, oh, okay, oh, they've got one of me, right, so I won't bother. Um, but what Georgia was alluding to there and what we co- sort of carried on saying within that broadcast was actually, you know what, just because somebody looks like you and they might be from the same place as you, it'd be like me going on a website and going, right, they've got someone five foot, you know, 10, five foot 11, white, brown hair from Manchester. He might look like me in a headshot, right? But he's not necessarily going to sound like me, walk like me, talk like me, behave like me, have a personality like me. Um, that person might be very, very different and might be like, you know, might play sort of like more of the the cold, darker characters, just might happen to look like me. Whereas I would probably play, you know, some of the higher energy mental characters or, you know, <laughs> sort of uh, the Alan Partridge, Anton de Beck lookalikes. Um but yeah, it doesn't mean that just because they've got someone who looks like you, you shouldn't apply. If you if they do have someone who looks like you, when you are applying though and you're, you're dropping them your stuff through, make sure you are putting your unique selling points in there that do make you different to the other person who might just look like you because you want to make it very, very clear. You don't want them to just look at your picture and go, oh, they, he looks like Dave. We've already kind of got a Dave. What makes you different to Dave? What skills do you have? that he won't have, you know, what languages do you speak, you know, anything else that makes you different, do you have any uh, disabilities that are invisible that you wouldn't normally see on a headshot or whatever, Um, something that just makes you different, you know, are you, uh, maybe you're not not from the same place, you just look the same, Um, there's lots of different things that, you know, that make people different just the fact that they look like you does not mean that that's it they, that agency can't afford to have more than one and also the other thing to remember as well is um what happens if dave's working if dave's already got a job then you know alex and georgia i'm sure would love to have another person in that casting bracket that then can they can send out for work whilst dave's on that three-month theater tour or he's maybe shooting that tv show for six months or whatever um so don't allow your fear to dress itself up as practicality and talk you out of reaching out to an agent because you're making up you're making up an excuse like they've got one of me already it might not be you know uh, the case that person might look like you but might be absolutely nothing like you in any other way zoe says not sure if this has been asked before but can you re-email an agency that you emailed before zoe I don't know if you were there on Thursday night for this session. If you weren't, go and watch it in the members area because we talk about this. And Alex actually goes through a scenario where this happened and that person got signed. And there's a specific reason why that happened. But go and watch the session or listen to it. You get the audio as well. So you can just watch, uh, listen to it as a podcast if you want whilst you're going about your day. Um, but yes, the answer absolutely is yes. Um, and it might not even be about sending the same agent different material. Um, it, there might be another, you know, another another reason uh, why you would reach out um, if they've seen your stuff and it's been a no um, on previous material. Then absolutely send more. I've never signed, just in my uh, in my experience, I've never signed with an agent first time. It's always been a no initially. Um, do you know what? Interestingly, on, on every agent as well, both my voiceover agency uh, that I'm currently with, my current acting agent, previous acting agents. It's always been further down the line, another th- an approach four months later, five months later, you know, an approach six months later on, on every single agency. We talk about it in that, um, in that feature as well, where it's like you might just feel that you belong to that team. You're just like, I resonate with this team so much. These are my kind of people. Um, I feel like I should be part of, you know, of that squad. Um, and if you feel really, really strongly about that, then yeah, it's definitely worth a uh, another approach. Jane Hickey, how are you doing? Hope you're good. Just notice you've joined there. 
Um, Sandra says new material is a good reason to reach out again. Yeah, definitely. Um, and Brendan's talking about establishing relationships through uh, multiple, you know, multiple contact uh, points. So yeah, definitely. Um, a no is never a no forever, Zoe. So that was the first thing. Uh, emailing agents, basically. Um, you've got to do your research. You've really got to understand what you offer that client list, where you fit in. Don't be deterred, though, if there is someone who looks like you. Remember, you know, you're, you're going to be very different to them. It's not just all based off how you know how you look. Um, and yeah, absolutely, reach out again if. Um, if it was a no six months ago, something might have changed. Someone might have left. They might have took on another team member. So now they can deal with more clients. Um, it's always worth uh, worth reaching out. And yeah, and, and we hammered home there as well. The personality within the email. The, la- the worst thing you can do is be really clinical. Dear sir, madam, please find my, my spotlight CV attached for your perusal. I would love to be represented by you. I look forward to hearing from you. Oh God, it's just bad. It's just like, it's just bad. Don't be afraid in a 2021, 2022 world to show some personality. Maybe a bit of humor. Um, it doesn't have to be all stuffy and, uh, and business-like. Next thing we're going to look at, show reels. Making an impact on an agent with a show reel, even if you do not have a professionally shot reel because it might be out of your remit right now. You might not have the funds to do that. Um, you might not have had any TV jobs, but you might know you're a freaking great actor. And actually, all you need to do is show them that in a self tape, in a scene from an acting class, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Nothing can speak more for you than your talent. You know, you can roll a turd in glitter, can't you? And put it in a put it in a show reel that's professionally shot and go, oh yeah, they just about got away with that. But I've seen some incredible performances. Uh, from actors and actresses who have just put a self-tape on Twitter, a two-minute tape, them in the bedroom, shot against a plain wall, no professional lighting, no professional audio, just their phone. And I have been, not on many occasions, I'll, I'll be completely honest, but on some occasions, absolutely captivated with the simplest setup. Like, if you are good, you're good. It's as simple as that. You don't need all the bells and whistles. Um, if you're not so good, you might need to hide behind all that stuff. But I think for an agent particularly, cell tapes are so important and powerful because it shows them what you're going to be like when they are giving you auditions, you know, and, and the sort of thing that you're going to be sending them back to submit to casting directors. So this was uh, Alex and George's... Uh, Sort of, you know, two cents on showreels in the in the full in the full like two hour session. We covered this in a lot more depth, but here's a couple of highlights for you. What are the ingredients that you need to see within the first sort of I don't know fifteen seconds before you, you know you turn it off because you're probably going to if if, you, if you're bored. What's the thing that piques your interest where you're like, right, I'm going to keep watching and maybe I want to ask this person in for a meeting. It's quite hard to pin down. Yeah, but you know, basics, a clear, like you said, well lit shot as to the best of your ability piece you know well written it can if you're not doing if you've not got an existing show reel then it's absolutely fine to send in something that you've filmed yourself and use something that is taken from a drama you've just watched or whatever because ultimately it's not going anywhere yep. you know we're just going to be looking at this so um i think it's about getting your casting really kind of down to a t as well having a good awareness of who you are in this industry and where you'd fit and then using that as your example in terms of what you can do because the amount of stuff I watch and I'm like no not not real you wouldn't be you wouldn't play that how can actors gain that self-awareness then so they are playing too tight you've got to do your research You, you know I ask I ask people there's nothing worse when I meet people and I'm like so what have you seen recently that you can see yourself in and that you you realistically feel that you would be would be perfect for you yeah they don't they haven't even watched anything you know and I just think oh Please show me some sort of enthusiasm for this industry that you're desperately wanting to be in, but you're not watching it and into it and yeah. having how, a knowledge of what's going on. And how can it's you just pinpoint? How can you pinpoint what cast directors you want to go after if you're not watching the stuff that's being this cast? So you can go, actually, you know what, Bridget and I see myself as this guy yeah. here. Right, Kelly Valentine Henry. Boom, I'm going to get onto you. You know, for if season two or three or four comes up or whenever we are in the future. Um, yeah, if you're not like aware of where you fit in, like you can't proactively go after what you want. And then you are continuously just writing those bullshit emails that are, dear sir, madam, I would love to be seen for anything. Acts on this.tv for the full shebang. Um, 
really interesting little uh, chat at the end of that clip, I thought, in terms of going, right, actually, if I could be anything right now, where would I be in the industry? What show would I be in? What do I think is the perfect kind of role for me? Um, I'd love to know some suggestions for, for you guys who are here live. What have you seen recently where you're like, that is me? You know, Do you have that self-awareness where you're like, right, I know the kind of character that I would play. Um, I know what kind of show it would be because, because, because then when you do, particularly if you, you know, if you know a show, like, you know, you know, that's going again, you can work backwards and go, right, well, this is actually simple. I know who my customer is now. My customer is ex casting director, whoever that would be, who cast the first season of that, because now it's going for season two. There might be some more characters in that that are aligned with me. Um, if you are just sending these generic bullshit emails, please see me for anything. It just shows you put in all the work on the casting director. You go in ER watch everything that I'm sending you now and you do all the work and figure it out for me and just give me a shout, um, which isn't really fair. Um, I think the more you can sort of make it easier for a casting director to understand you, your casting type and where you fit in and truly embracing who you are. So many actors, like, I hear this nonsense. I think it's nonsense anyway. It's just my opinion. You can you can <laughs> flame me up or whatever they call it on uh, on on Twitter. What do they call that when you when what were they, what do people call it when you just basically get like totally smashed with people going you're wrong you're wrong you're wrong. Um, I think that uh, what was my point? <laughs> I'm trying to think of what that thing's called. I've just gone. Uh, oh my god, that's so mental! I had such a strong impulse to go. Listen, I think this is wrong i mean i think this is right you might think i'm wrong and now i can't remember what my point was it was about embracing you oh yeah no i know exactly what it is i hear so many people come into this industry and i think i think they're lying to themselves anyway they say things like oh i became an actor because i just wanted to be other people i didn't want to be i i don't like myself so i just wanted to be someone else i don't believe that i think that that's some that sounds quite clever or it sounds quite romanticized in terms of, oh yeah, I want to escape who I am. Um, I think it's a real, I think it's a bad strategy because I think you you will often, particularly at the start of your career, just get cast for what you bring to the party, who you bring to the party, embracing yourself, your true authentic self. Um, and I think you've got to work on that first. You've got to work on liking who you are before you're going to succeed as an actor because you've only got you. And I see a lot of people trying to play so hard against who they are, and I don't believe them for a second. I just go, oh, God. It just doesn't, I don't think, leads for a good performance. Only my experience, right? I could be completely wrong. It's just my opinion. But I think that your success in this industry is entirely predicated on your mindset and your belief system. And I think that if your mindset and belief system is that you're not a good enough person or you don't like you for whatever reason... I think you're, set, you're sort of setting a foundation for yourself that's just weak, that's just going to crumble. You can't really build a career on top of, I'm going to build a career out of being everyone else because I hate myself. But I have heard a lot of actors say that. And part of me just thinks, oh, it just sounds like a clever thing to say. I don't know if I actually believe them. But you've got to, um, you've got to embrace who you are, man. You've got to do that. you know, And you've got to come to terms with and find a way to sort out your your mental game your mindset to go actually you know what the only thing i have in this industry is me to get roles so i have to like that otherwise i'm pretty screwed it's not like you can go and get a different person and go that's it i'm gonna just uh get someone else to audition for me um let me see what people are saying they should be in sharon's saying call the midwife all the way for her uh brenna says i could easily be a character in bbc's ghosts sandra says fleabag is me uh, just that she's got her shit together a bit more because she owns a cafe. <laughs> uh, Gillian, uh, what's going on with Gillian? Says, keep doing the work, work on your craft, make mistakes, cry, laugh, and take take risks. So people, thank you guys. What's going on here, Gillian? What are you thanking people for? Uh, let me scroll up a little bit. Oh, Brenda says, shout out to Gillian, who's killing it with the voiceover gallery. You're doing a lot of voiceover, Gillian. That's wicked. Voiceover gallery changed my life. <laughs> Literally changed my life. Um... Let's have a look. Uh, see who else people wanna wanna be. Mindset is absolutely the bloody game changer, says Sandra. No, it really is. Joe's struggling a bit with confidence. It's a forever game confidence, Joe. But you've got to, yeah, you've got you really got to work on that as a foundation for you know what any any kind of success in your life. And a lot of it, you know, confidence can't just can't just 
be, you know, come out of thin air. It needs to be cultivated. And you can cultivate it properly, but you need courage, commitment, and capability, I believe, leads to confidence. And, um, and sometimes that, that five seconds of courage is, is the first step to jump, make that leap. And it's only from there, once you've committed to getting better at something, you want to improve yourself um, through effort that you get the capability um, once you've committed to that, you know, you get the capability and then you can be confident going into it next time. So no one's ever going to be confident going into an audition for the first time because you've never done it. It requires courage to walk through the door. Once you're through the door, there ain't really that that much chance you're going to leave. You're probably not going to run away. So you've committed. You do the audition. You develop capability through doing the audition and going, oh, I screwed that bit up or I won't do that again. I got that bit right. And then you get confidence from the next time because you've already done it. So that's how I believe you uh, you build confidence, but it is a forever game. It's something that we're all going to be working on forever because if you are stretching yourself, you're going to be constantly putting yourself in new situations um, that you've never been in before. Um, but that is how we grow. Um, really, when you look at it, the, the great thing about life and just any kind of success, when you look at actually what is between you and where you want to be, it's just a set of skills. It's pretty much as simple as that. Developing the skill set to get from where you are A to where you want to be B. And that just requires effort. Human beings are designed to get better, you know, and grow through effort. Um, so it's not as daunting when you look at it like that, ultimately, you know. And also that, that can really bring you back to accountability and responsibility for where you're at in your life. I am where I am at in my life right now, purely 100% based on every decision I have ever made to this point and the skill sets that I have chosen to develop. Nothing else, not, not no skill sets life has made me develop or like, you know, although that happens, you're thrown a curveball, you know, by life and you get better at something because life punches you in the face. Um, but really, yeah, anything that, if I'm not where I want to be in a certain area, it's entirely down to the fact that I never made that decision until this point to develop my skill set that's going to get me to that place. Which is brilliant because you go, oh God, yeah, actually that's it. That's all I need to do. Um, but every decision literally down to me going, yeah, I will go live tonight on Monday and me setting up this setup and organizing the Facebook Live so that I, I, I knew I would be broadcasting video at nine o'clock because I knew I developed the skill set of how to set up a Facebook Live. Every decision that I have made brought me to this point. Literally every single decision. That blows your mind when you think about it. Every decision you have made has brought you to this point right now, literally down to me sitting on the chair that I decided I was going to buy from Ikea, the desk that I chose, the computer that I chose, everything, you know, the decision I made 12 years ago to set up ads on this.tv and not quit for 12 years, for the first eight years when no one gave a shit. Um, it's mind blowing. It really is. And it just puts all the power in your hands. That's all it is. Just make you know, make better decisions if that's if, if if you want to improve in a certain area. Choose to make a higher quality decision, develop a new skill set. There's loads of stuff I want to do and I just haven't done it because I've not decided I wanted to develop the uh the skill set. But it's um it's interesting. It makes it uh it makes it a much more obtainable, I think, thing, whatever it is you're looking for when you go, actually you just need to develop some uh, some skills. Um right, I've got another couple of clips to play out. Let's just have a look in the uh, in the chat here. Um Sharon says she'd also love to play Queen Victoria in something. Sharon, get to it. Get one of those big frilly things on around your neck. Let's um let's get you sorted out. It's Queen Victoria in something. That was Queen Victoria, wasn't it? Frilly neck Victoria, definitely. Um, Rob says I've been meaning to ask where your chair's from Ikea Robert don't know if they still make them mate but you know get yourself get yourself down there I think it's about 120 quid total bargain right next uh, next thing to look at who's got an agent but you're getting no auditions right now let me know before I play this clip I'm going to have some ginger tea I didn't get any because I was sucking up the tea bag it's not not great it's good for your throat apparently though um, yeah, who's, who's got an agent but not getting any auditions? Christian's saying me. Rob's saying me. Any more for any more? Or are people just getting loads of auditions right now? Maybe. Maybe, maybe you are. Um, 
Right, it looks like looks like most people are getting auditions. But right, if you're not, this is a question. I love asking questions on these uh, member only mastermind sessions that we do that I know actors want to know the answer to, but maybe like be a bit afraid to ask. So I put this question to Alex and Georgia, going, "Listen, if you're an actor and you're not getting auditions, how can you work with your agent to uh, to make it happen to turn things around?" Here's their advice and how they work with their clients. If an actor just isn't getting auditions. How can they work with their agent to fix that? That's the key, isn't it, about this question, with their agents. It's yeah. not, my agent's shit because I'm not getting anything. It's why is that? Why is that the case? Because nine times out of ten, it's probably not actually the agent. The first thing we do when anyone applies and they come in is dissect them and their CV and where they're at and what people are seeing and why it may be that things are affecting them in different ways. Because, you know, if they're, if they're coming in, we know they can act. So it's about kind of trying to think outside the box as to what it is that these casting directors are looking at when they look on their profile. And I think there is so much on there that is that people just don't even think about. I mean, for starters, when did you all look on your CVs? And when did you last update them? Because, oh my God, it gets my blood boiling when we work so hard to get to get these bloody jobs and then they're not even on there. I think it's about kind of knowing that you've got everything ticked off, ready to go. And that's the frustrating thing is, you know, like you say, we get these emails when I'm not just, it's not working, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, they don't do this. And then I look on and I'm like, well, you've not, when did you have to have pictures? Like three years ago, that's the starter. When did you last update your showreel? Because it looks 20 years old. If you genuinely feel you are doing everything you've done on your side, then you should be, hopefully, you've got a relationship with your agent where you can ring us up and say, I really think I've done everything, but tell me what I'm missing. And then we can have you in. You know, we like to catch up with our actors every four to six months, having... Um, CV dissects and pictures and why yeah. aren't you getting in the room? Don't understand. Then as soon as we've changed one thing, it's like 10 auditions have come Boom. in over yeah. the month. But if you don't think that you can talk to your agent about things, that's an issue. And it's not necessarily your agent's issue and it's not necessarily your issue, but something's not working together. Yeah. If we can't have those conversations, then it's not going to work. Boom, actsonlist.tv. Um, get membership if you want to access the full two-hour chat and hundreds of hours of other chats as well with incredible people, agents, actors, writers, directors, producers, and execs in TV, the best people in the industry, full stop. Um, interesting though, isn't it? Like sometimes, and I know I've been with agents in the past, thankfully not for many years. Excuse me, but when <laughs> burping there. But when things aren't or hadn't been working, I was actually too scared, if I'm honest with you, to phone up and actually put it to them. Because I'm like, what if they take offence? What if they think that I'm complaining? And there was a real kind of like hierarchy there that shouldn't exist. Like you work with your agent, not for them. They don't necessarily work for you. Uh, you know, you kind of work for and with each other. Um, and I think there are still a lot of people, and I've had conversations with actors in this community who still feel that way, that something's not working and they just cannot have that honest chat. Once you've looked at your side of the bargain and gone, I have done everything that I've been asked, you know, I, I can kind of do. I am, you know, well, I have my, my shit together. Ultimately, my Spotlight CV is bang up to date. All my latest credits are on it. And my headshots are current and they look like me. They're not, you know, sort of photoshopped 6,000 times and 25 years old. My reel is current. It's authentically showing me. I'm happy with every performance. I'm reaching out myself and networking with casting directors. I feel like I'm doing everything on my end. Then you can ring your agent with confidence and say, listen, I think I'm doing everything that I should be doing. What am I missing? And they might go, right, okay, let's, like they said, let's have a sit down and we'll dissect everything and we'll have a look. And Georgia said there, sometimes they'll change one thing and boom. I've seen this with headshots, you know. I think actors sometimes think their reel is more important than the headshots, but the headshot is the first thing an, an agent or a casting director, anyone in the industry really, even if they're looking at your Twitter, your tweet, uh, they're going to see your headshot first before they've seen your reel. And it might just be your headshot that has a really interesting look. And you've got to remember when you're being submitted for stuff on Spotlight, casting directors are getting um, your headshot through via these little tiny thumbnails. They're not seeing a 10 by 8 photograph. 
like back in the day, we would print out and send to people. Um, they're seeing these little thumbnails. So, and they're often seeing them in black and white as well. So what's quite a good exercise is making your uh, photograph black and white and shrinking it right down and going right on a page. You're never going to use it like that, by the way. This is just an exercise. Um, you know, if if I saw my shot on a page amongst 20 others, um, how does my headshot translate? You know, is it actually too dark and my hair's dark and the background's dark? So if it's printed out and it's black and white, it looks like just a big, like bright white face in the middle of a, you know, just like a floating head. <laughs> Basically, does it even look like you've got hair? Um, there's all kinds of things like that where you go, actually, no, that headshot is really not showing me at my best when it's printed out that way. Um, so we're going to change it up. And then suddenly, boom, catches people's eyes. And you go, oh, yeah, now I see it. we get in auditions. And nothing's changed. I've not got better. It's not because I was rubbish before, just because, you know, I wasn't thinking about the way cast directors are seeing me when I'm submitted for stuff. So that's something that's pretty uh, pretty interesting to, to look at. Um, but don't be afraid to ring your agent and have a chat if you want to. You're not being... Um, you know, like a time sucker or you're not being awkward or anything like that because ultimately when you're working, guys, your agent is earning more money. Let's just be honest. They would love it if you were getting inundated with auditions because they are going to be laughing all the way to the bank. Um, let's have a look, see what's going on. Rob says his agent's only putting him up for theatre. Have a conversation, Robert. Simple conversation, mate. Listen, you know, get your submissions list and say, can I be put forward for some more TV? But know the kind of thing. Go to them with projects. Go, this is me. Let them know that you are aware of your type and you know your strengths and where you fit in. There's no point in saying, hi, guys, I'd just like to do more TV. Well, what do you want to do? Um, you know, do you want to do drama? Do you want to do comedy? Do you want to do serial drama? Um, you know, if, if you could be in any show right now as any character, where do you think you, uh, you fit perfectly? I want to be Joe in... Um, I don't know when the third season's coming out on Netflix. Um, of you, have you seen it? Season one and two, I crushed, I think, in the first lockdown. Absolutely phenomenal. I relate to that guy a lot. He basically goes out with girls. <laughs> he goes out with, he's a nice guy, right? Joe is a nice guy. He goes out with these girls. They get him into trouble and he ends up, he just has to kill them. And I can relate because I can go, oh God, now look what's happened. Oh, now, now, oh, God, you give me no choice. I have got to kill you. I could see, you know, <laughs> I could see my previous relationships. I could see how that could, e that could easily happen. Don't worry, I'm not a serial killer. Um, but I think I could, I could have a good stab at that kind of role. The sort of like, the guy who really does not mean to do any harm. He's a really nice guy at heart, but just gets put in these positions where he's like, oh my God, such a great show. If you've not seen it, watch it. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, let's have a look, see what else is going down in the chat. I've got another uh, couple of clips to play out. Um, Mark says, never had an agent that has been able to overcome whatever isn't working or properly identify it. Do you know what, Mark? We need to do with you some kind of... I don't know, we need to do some... I think I think maybe when... I don't know, like the next time I bring agents on or something. I've got Deborah Wiley coming on from Independent Talent in a couple of weeks. I wonder if I take a few people from the ads on this, like their CVs, if people would be up for it, if I take like a, you know, maybe two or three people at random, Mark will just do you because you've given me the idea. Um, and, we, and we put your spotlight up on screen and go, right, from an agent's perspective now, how would you sell Mark or Joe or Dave or whoever these people are that we, we just end up choosing? Um, and just, yeah, we just have a look, you know, from, from some of the, most established agents in the industry and go right how do we how do we how would you do this how would you pimp mark out to the casting directors do you think we need to change anything on his spotlight um maybe that'd be something that'd be quite interesting for people to people to watch uh brian says can anyone recommend any london or essex based people who do headshots that actually make you look like you the ones i've had in the past are always done in a flattering light or using flattering lighting you can't see my wrinkles in my headshots <laughs> And when I turn up for the auditions, I have wrinkles. Yeah, your headshots just need to look like you on a good day, Brian. You don't need to like accentuate any uh, any aging factors. But yeah, it's got to look like you. Got to authentically represent you. Um, and what I find is you're probably in the past, Brian. You probably haven't been to a headshot photographer. You've been to an editorial headshot photographer who maybe shoots family portraits, and they're the pictures that make the whole family look beautiful when you hang them in your in your living room. Um, you need to go to a, a, a headshot specialist who specialises in actors headshots nothing else i mean they can do other stuff but they've got to know 
about actors' headshots. It can't be someone who does these. You know, you get those family portraits. They're generally done on a white background. It looks like everyone's like in heaven. And they've got like, you know, they're all sat there on the floor smiling. The baby and the kids and the dog's here. Um, I think a lot of people end up going to those kind of photographers if they don't know the game, they don't know the industry. And they get headshots that make them look, like you said, you know, really polished and glamorous. But actually, it's not authentically them. Um, so, yeah, if anyone can recommend any people in London or Essex for uh, for Brian, um, give him a uh, shout in the comments there. Um, there's some cracking headshot photographers I know in the north, Brian, but... Down south, uh, I think Michael Worley gets a lot of good reviews. Kim uh, Hardy gets some really good reviews as well. Um, obviously, I'm a big uh, fan of Tony Blake up in Chester, but that's a bit of a it's a day out for you if you were going to do that. Um, so uh, have a uh, yeah, uh, keep an eye on the comments. Hopefully, people will put some stuff in. Uh, right, I've got one more clip. I think. Uh, oh no, I haven't actually. I've got I have got a clip that I'm going to play out at the end though. I'm going to play like an like a, a little teaser trailer of some other things from Alex's chat. The next thing I want to play out is this is going on tomorrow night. The time is eight thirty p.m. tomorrow night for all at on this TV members. We are um, having our weekly member only mastermind session. I'll just go over to the website with an absolute freaking legend. Let me just go to the uh, to the homepage. I cannot, I honestly cannot wait for this chat. I have been waiting for quite a while, but I absolutely love this guy. Mr. Tony Way, there he is there, sat next to Ricky Gervais. He plays Lenny in Afterlife. If anyone is a, is a fan of Ricky Gervais's Afterlife, I could not be a bigger fan. Um, I want to be in that. I don't know how to play in that, though. There's no characters like me in that. Maybe he's uh, like his brother-in-law, but yeah, I mean... I need them to write me a new character, and they've already just done season three, haven't they? So we need to get we need to get onto that if there's going to be a season four. Um, but yeah, Tony plays Lenny. He's hilarious. Um, you'll know him as Lenny, but the guy's had 111 other credits in incredible TV shows over the years. Everything from Game of Thrones to ITV's Des. Um, you know the the uh, Des Nielsen drama uh, with uh, David Tennant. Lewis Arnold directed it, and um, Jason Watkins had some incredible people in that. Daniel Mays. Um, also things like Giri Hadji. Um, he's just he just works constantly. Like he's just a top, top bloke as well. Really good guy. Uh, we're gonna be diving into his career. We're gonna be getting all the goss on Afterlife and working with Ricky Gervais, what it's like on that set. Um, which sounds very unique. I was talking to Tony last week about it and it seems like a very different kind of set to most TV sets when you're working with Ricky Gervais. Uh, so we're gonna find out all about that. His audition strategy, tips for casting, marketing, signing with agents. He's got an incredible agent at United, Helen Robinson at United. Um, we're going to be covering it all, basically. Here is a trailer. <laughs> Look at the end of this trailer as well. Um, <laughs> Tony promises anyone who tunes in some, uh, some absolute treats. Actors, have I got a treat for you and I cannot freaking wait. I want to invite you to the next ActOnThis.tv live mastermind session, which is taking place on Zoom on Tuesday, the 7th of September at 8.30 p.m. with this absolute legend here, star of so many of my favorite TV shows, including recent smash hits like Giri Hadji, ITV's Des, and of course, you'll know him as Lenny from Ricky Gervais' Afterlife. It's Tony Way in the house. Tony... Thank you so much for being here, mate. I really, really appreciate it. What are we going to be chatting about on Tuesday night? Hello. Um, I think we're going to talk about my career and how I managed to I insanely get 111 credits on IMDb, you've just informed me. Yeah, you got uh, 111. I know, That's incredible. Insane. I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> I should say no more. Um, I talk about casting, that sort of thing, how it's not that terrifying if you don't make it terrifying in your head. Yep. Um, and I guarantee I will... Get you all a job. No, that's not true. I'll talk about Ricky. Gervais. You know what? I'll talk about Ricky Gervais. I'll give you all the secrets. Oh my god! Honestly, literally, I cannot. Honestly, I cannot freaking wait for this. Actors, if you want to get involved, if you want to come and watch this chat, potentially jump on camera, have a little one-to-one -one with Tony, have a chat with me if you like. Tony's definitely the person you're probably going to want to talk to. Um, get yourself over right now to actonthis.tv forward slash live for full details of this mastermind session and all future sessions. We do it every single week with a top actor, agent, casting director, writer, director, producer best people in the industry basically tony um a little bit of pressure on you to end mm. this trailer why mm. don't actors want to miss this session in particular um i will send every person that tunes in a personal nude 
picture <laughs> of me. There you go. If you want more, what more can you ask for? If you want nudes, be there. Act on this. TV forward slash live. Ah, oh, God. So, <laughs> still makes me laugh. Even now, I've seen that trailer about ten times. Uh, yeah, free personal nude. <laughs> From Lenny Adam After Life, if you uh, tune in tomorrow night, um, star, like terms and conditions, only joking, but um, it's going to be an incredible session. You're going to love it. Honestly, do come and join us at sunless.tv forward slash live. We do do it every week with the biggest names in the game. If you are an actor, you like acting and you want more jobs on TV, you will be mental not to get involved in this community. So uh, do get your uh, do get your membership at sunless.tv forward slash live to check out the schedule of other calls as well. Got loads of cool stuff coming up. Now, uh, we've just got 12 minutes left. I want to cover something. Next Monday night, I got a call today from somebody who was uh, interested in um, putting a little call out in our community just for people who want to get some experience on set. Now, this isn't a paid gig or anything like that. This would just be to get some experience with some guys who know what they're doing. Um, I'm a big advocate of, um, of obviously knowing your worth and not doing free jobs for everything and going, oh, I'm just going to go and work for free. Don't do that. But I've got a lot of gigs out of helping other people who are decent achieve what they want to achieve. Um, you know, when they've gone on to do other things. Sometimes there is a right place and the right time to just muck in for some stuff if you want to, uh, you know, help people out and just get a bit of experience. There might be people in the acts on this community who are like, yeah, you know what, I wouldn't mind spending a day on set on a short film and getting some experience. Um, let me go over to my web browser. I think next Monday night we are going to have, um, let's have a look, we're going to have these guys on uh, next Monday's Facebook. So this isn't a member-only mastermind or something. This is just going to be next, next week's uh, Facebook uh, live session. Um, Sam Retford, uh, it's Coronation Street, Sam Retford, Hollyoaks, David Tag. Um, they're doing a new film, basically. They collaborated on a film, a short film that got BAFTA, quali- a quali- a BAFTA qualification um, last year called, I think it was called Sam. I'm just researching it at the moment before I went live tonight. They're doing a new film called White Wedding. Um, it's already in production. It sounds incredible. It sounds it sounds absolutely like off its head. It's an LGBTQ plus music film with a horrific twist involving different dimensions and flesh eating creatures. <laughs> They're looking for um, supporting artists for the wedding scene. Some zombies, some not zombies. Um, I think they're going to come on next Monday night to talk about it. I think they're looking for about 50 people um, to get involved. This was an a article that they did on Digital Spy. Um, I saw one in the Metro before as well of these guys teaming up together. Um, it's going to be shot in Macclesfield some point over the next month. I don't know exactly when. We'll get all the details next week. Um, they'll feed people. They'll water people. You, I think you get an IMDb credit. Um, but it's just a, uh, a way, yeah, to, to help out Um two guys you know finish this film basically um sam plays um uh curtis in coronation street um and uh, sylvester mcqueen um is david tag in hollyoaks so uh, they've got experience in front of the camera and now they're going behind and in front of the camera to uh, to shoot this film so let us know in the chat now if that sounds like something you'd be interested in. We'll get the guys on um, and whoever else is involved. I don't know exactly. As I say, literally just found out about it before we went live tonight. So I'm still reading the article all about it. Um, but let us know if that would be something that you'd be interested in helping them out on. You don't know what connections you could make. And um, you don't know you know, what that film's going to do or what other opportunities it will uh, it will lead to. But I just thought it, you know, it's pretty cool. Always like helping people out who are... Um, you know, try to just create their own destiny effectively in this industry. Um, lots of people are saying, how do you apply, that sort of stuff. I don't know yet. If I'm honest with you, I have no idea. Literally just found out about it before I went live tonight. But we will find out next Monday night. Um, I'll have them on this live broadcast. We'll do, I've got to figure out how we're going to broadcast it. Maybe I'll, I'll broadcast a Zoom session to Facebook. Uh, you guys will tune in the same way as normal. Um, on Facebook like you have done tonight. And, um, and we can quiz them. But yeah, I just thought, I think they're looking for like 50 people. So, um, 
you know, there'll be lots of opportunity. I'm sure they'll be grateful for any help they can uh, they can get. But yeah, Macclesfield, as far as I know, um, it's going to be Christian um, Macclesfield. And Josh says, I'm filming with the people shooting it this weekend for my showreel. Yeah, you are. Absolutely. That's uh, Yeah, I did mention that today uh, when I spoke to him, Josh. So let us know how the um, how the showreel goes, dude. Um, wicked. So, um, so yeah, we'll get more information on that next week. Um, anything else that I've got to talk to you about? I think I've covered most things. We've got eight minutes left for a little bit of Q&A if you want, and I'm going to play you the trailer um, for some of the little bits from Alex Priestley and Georgia Padfield's session last week. Um, let me know what else you want me to... Do you know what will be useful? Next week, I am not doing a live broadcast. We'll do a Monday night one, obviously, but we're not going to do a, a live Zoom session for members of AtsOnThis.tv because I've got something special for you guys. Next, when will it be? Thursday, I'm going to be dropping a two-and-a-half-hour podcast that me and Petch did, uh, recapping on the last 18 months of this industry, of running AtsOnThis.tv, what it was like running the business, how I literally, I've probably never said this before, at the start of lockdown, was probably three weeks away from losing the business. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? But yeah, at the start of lockdown, I literally sat there and, and looked at the figures and went, right, if we carry on like we have carried on this week, I've prob I'm probably going to lose what's taken me 10 years to build in three weeks. Thank God that didn't happen. We're actually bigger and stronger than ever. Um, but I go into details about that and um, we go into details just about everything behind the scenes, stuff that we've never really spoken about publicly before. Um, I just basically turned the tables on myself and I said to Petch, you go and just write any questions you want to ask me or the, the community want to ask me uh, and we'll chew the fat. And we did it one Friday night a week ago in my kitchen um, and that's going to be going live for you guys next Thursday. So you can take that in in your own time. The following Tuesday, we'll be back to doing a live session. Um, but I want to try and mix up a little bit of stuff like that for you where we do give you some longer in-depth things um, that are pre-recorded um, as well as the live sessions that we do. So we might, you know, sort of alternate or, you know, you'll just get some of the pre-recorded stuff just just dropped in now and again um, in exchange for uh, a live session one week. Um, just means that people, you know, can sort of take in stuff of the, you know, on their own time they don't have to be there live and that sort of stuff even though you get recordings of everything anyway um i think sometimes it's nice to just go a bit deeper our live sessions are normally only an hour and a half sometimes i like to sit in a kitchen with a casting director and go for three hours <laughs> so gonna be dropping that for you next week um which is uh which is pretty good um so uh we've got that to look forward to but it'd be interesting if you could let me know more of the stuff you want to see more of as well. If you're a member of the community, you're a premium member, um, you know, let me know like what features you want to see more of. Do we? Do you need to see from more of a particular type of person in the industry? Would it be interesting to do more round table things with people? Do you want me to bring, I don't know, do we do a session one week that's pre-recorded with some members of the community and we talk about your challenges as opposed to bringing super successful people on and talking about how they've got where they have got which is great and invaluable but maybe we bring some members on and we do a pre-recorded session with like six members we just choose randomly in a lottery or something and we record a feature together and you can chat about you know your experiences that you think would help other people in the community i don't know i'm up for anything this year now like you know let's start start mixing it up a little bit um voiceover more voiceover stuff says joe would be uh will be fab yeah we've done a couple of voiceover things um i've had my uh my agents on a couple of times in the voiceover gallery i had peter dixon on from gravy for the brain um but maybe i could bring uh, i mean let me know you, who you'd want what do you want like engineers or producers um voiceover directors um let me know i mean i'm just up for any and all feedback, basically, guys. Um, there's a brilliant webinar you can watch on the voiceover gallery. So, Sandra, yeah, Joe, that's in the members area. Um, just for people who don't, because I think sometimes there's so much content in the members area, I think sometimes people don't realize uh, you can skip through more. So if you click onto the members area here, Joe, the purple um, uh, products is your premium membership. Click click that button to get access. Now in here, in each section, so obviously you've got the latest five features there. And sorry for those on the audio experience, you won't see any of this, but just imagine it in your head. Um, in the other section, so it says like round table features, this is where we have more than one person from a certain discipline on. Um, they're in this section here, we've got, you know, features with actors, features with agents, uh, features with casting directors. You'll only see the first 10 in each section, unless you click, I, may, I should make it a bit more obvious really, this little, under, under each section, you'll see this little show more link, 
when you click on that, it takes you into a section where they're all and they're paginated. I think paginated. They basically, got just pages underneath at the bottom there. You'll see like page one, page two, page three, page four. So sometimes people might think, oh, there's 10 features with casting directors. There's not. There's 40. So if you click on page two, you'll go through and you will see more. Um, so sometimes, um, you know, like with agents, for example, you might be looking for some stuff on VoiceOver, Joe. Um, and unless, I think the VoiceOver gallery is quite recent, so it should be in the first 10, I think. Yeah, it is. There it is. Yeah, launching a voiceover career that lasts with top voiceover over, over eight. I can't speak. With top voiceover agency, the voiceover gallery. Um, that's a cracking, that's a really, that's a cracking session to watch um, that one, Joe. But yeah, you just, just know that you can click on the uh, show more links and you will see more, you know, um, like featured with directors, for instance. I don't know how many of these are, but you only see 10 there. when really there's 20. So um, there is quite a lot to dig in there. I think what I'm going to do, and I might be asking for feedback from the community about this as well, is I'm probably at some stage, maybe end of this year, going to do a little redesign of the members area, make it a little bit more like Netflix, where you'll sort of be able to see more features like simultaneously. I mean, because it is, the, 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 the stuff in the members area really is like Netflix. There's no set order to go through it in or anything like that. You literally just go through whatever you fancy, maybe you fancy, you know, a session with a cast and director, just click on the one that you like. There's no set way to go through it. But I do appreciate when you are, um, you know, given, I don't know what there is, maybe 200 features, you might be like, shit, this is a bit much. I don't know where to start. I'm overwhelmed. And you might get analysis paralysis. And then you just go, oh, it's too much for me. I won't do anything with it. Even though the information is absolutely gold. So don't be overwhelmed by it. Choose something that you just fancy. Um, but I will try and lay that stuff out a little bit better for you guys. I do know, you know, when I first set the site up, that was fine, laying it out like that. Now there's so many features, I do, I, I get it, that it's, you know, maybe not as obvious um, as it could be. So I will uh, I will have a look at that. Do you still do book club? Uh, it's, it's a Caroline. Um, no, I haven't for ages. We used to do on a Monday night. Every week we would alternate, wouldn't we, Caroline? We would do one of these sessions and then the next week I'd do like a book club. So I've got these books behind me to make me look intelligent. Um, I have read a lot of them, but I to hold myself accountable for reading them, I read them to you guys. Because so I thought I might not have time to read them myself, but I thought, no, if I do a book club and for an hour, I will read you guys a book. Um, and we'd read like a chapter a week, wouldn't we? And then over a month we would cover uh, a book. You know, we'd do like four chapters from a book and get get a good gist on a book. And we covered some cracking books. Um, if you go to, let me see if it still exists. This is a blast from the past, uh, if it does, Caroline. If you go to actonthis.tv forward slash, oh, what will it be? Book, book, books? <laughs> I don't know. Or book list or what will it be? No, it's not books. Uh, Maybe book club. No. <laughs> uh, book list. Will it be that? Oh, it's definitely, it is still there. I just don't know what the web address is. Oh, in fact, yeah, I know, I know how we can get to it. Go into the members area. I wonder if right at the bottom of the members area, it's still there. Yes. Yes, it is. The ads on this book club book list. Uh, let's see where it is. Click here to see the list. So the web address is that's on this.tv. Oh, forward slash book list, but with no hyphen in it. And you will see these were 12 of the 12 books I reckon everyone should read in 2021. There is still time. Um, and these were a lot of the books from the book club. And you can just click the blue button and it'll take you over and just, you know, you, you go, oh, I want to buy the one thing, cracking book. Click on that. Should take us over to Amazon. And uh, yeah, there you go. Just takes you straight over and you can uh, you can just buy it. Um, they're not expensive, any of these books, but there are some absolute crackers. Um, and these are books that we all, uh, you know, that we read. Who Moved My Cheese? That was a brilliant book. Let's see how much that is. Uh, Dr. Spencer Johnson. What is it? Kindles of Fiverr. Paperback, £5.94. Get that book. That's an absolute cracking book. But yeah, Caroline, maybe if you want, maybe who wants to do more book club then? I don't know. Uh, we've not done that in ages. Um I used to love doing that. Yeah, held me accountable for reading more books. I got through about 20 books a year um, when I was doing that back in the day. Jack and Ori with Ross, says Nick? It was a little bit like that, definitely. Um, but yeah, we could do some uh, We could do some, some, some book club stuff. Uh, maybe even if it's just once a month, we could do that. Uh, but basically, yeah, I am up for 
anything that you guys want. I just want to provide you with what you find useful. I know I sort of, you know, I feel I know what the community needs. That's why I choose the guests on actonlist.tv. Sometimes I'm a little bit selfish and I go, I'd like to sort of Tony Way out of Afterlife. And I just bring him on because I love him as well. <laughs> but, but I know you guys will benefit. But I do need feedback from you guys on what you would like. So maybe I'll set up a form on the website for some like actonlist.tv forward slash ideas or something like that. I'll set up a little form um and you guys can let me know you know some ideas for features and things that you think would be uh, would be useful um that would be pretty cool um uh, right well i'm gonna love you leave you guys two minutes past 10 thank you so much for joining us if you're watching this far on the replay it really means the world if you are listening this far on the audio experience after you've just heard me describe a page on that's on this and you've not been able to see it um then thank you very much for your patience um do come and join us live one week we do this every single week and do join us live tomorrow night if you can 8 30 p.m tomorrow don't forget it's not 7 30 like normal um tony's got a little toddler needs to be in bed um so we're pushing the session back 8 30 till 10 normally it'd be 7 30 till 9 uh, we've actually got a session coming up next month that's at half three in the afternoon uh, for childcare reasons as well, but I will keep you posted on times. But yeah, 8.30 p.m. tomorrow. If you want to join us, you want to potentially jump on camera, have a chat with Tony, maybe you're a massive fan of Afterlife, you'd love to work with Ricky Gervais, you want to know all about it, um, at onthis.tv forward slash live. I would absolutely love to see you there. Anything else I can do for you in the meantime, guys, drop me a tweet at at on this TV. If you Facebook message me or you have emailed me in the last 14 days, it's been crazy. If I've not got back to you, I'm not ignoring you. Please just chill. Um, I will get back to you um, as soon as I possibly can. Um, so thank you for your patience there. I'm going to finish by playing out. Uh, yeah, just a little bit more of the uh, session we held with Alex and Georgia from Alex Priestley Talent. Great agents last week. If you're looking for an agent, you'll be crazy not to go and watch this in the uh, in the members area. Again, get your membership if you need one. Um, and I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you next week, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Loads of love to everybody. Have an amazing week, and I will catch up with you soon. Until next time. Bye for now. Two absolute legends, founder of and agent at Alex Priestley Talent. It's Alex Priestley, of course, and her awesome assistant agent, Georgia Padfield. Ladies, good evening. How are you? I'm asking the questions actors want to know the answers to. Like, we don't want to come and go, just believe in yourself and it'll all be fine. No, <laughs> you need to take some freaking action. So yeah. I've chosen three Amen. people. What was it in David? How did he approach you? Why did you want to sign in? I could tell straight off that he was a doer. Um, that he was proactive, that he wanted it, that he had that drive. Yeah. You know, it, he was great in his emails. He was confident for his age. Um, he had a great look. He's castable. He's friendly. He's northern. Judge me. I mean, what else? What more could you ask for? <laughs> I'm going to go through um, how to approach. Hey, I've done it right. Alex Breezy Talent. I've done it the right way around. <laughs> um, for rep, the right way. The main points are. Do your research, make sure you know who you're emailing and make it personal. There's nothing worse when I meet people and I'm like, so what have you seen recently that you can see yourself in and that you, you realistically feel that you would be would be perfect for you? Yeah. They, don't, they haven't even watched anything. If an actor just isn't getting auditions, how can they work with their agent to fix that? If you genuinely feel you are doing everything you've done on your side, then you should be, hopefully, you've got a relationship with your agent where you can ring us up and say i really think i've done everything but tell me what i'm missing if there's anyone in the community who fits this brief right now we want to hear from you any real gaps that you want to fill what are you more likely to go and see if you are invited to something i just wondered how you'd feel if someone had a commercial agent or do you prefer to do everything yourself how important is it to get a submissions list like on a regular basis. I think it's just getting that right balance. Like it is sometimes super useful, particularly if you are feeling like you've lost connection with the industry and who's doing what. If you don't take risks, you're never gonna get anywhere. Just trust your instincts. And if you wanna reach out to someone, do it. <laughs>